well, we're in 591 BC. Now that's uh, a good five or six years ahead of the fall of Jerusalem and Judea. And we're in Ezekiel chapter 10 and 11. And uh, we're still in Judah and Jerusalem uh, at the temple where Ezekiel has been lifted up in like a drone to see what's going on in Jerusalem and at the temple. And there are eight things that I want you to see in these two chapters. The first is the man in the linen. And now you remember we identified him before. The, the linen priestly garments are Jesus. And God the Father speaks to Jesus and he says, I want you to gather up coals, the coals from the fire, and I want you to scatter them over the city and over the temple. I want you to purify uh, the, the situation that's going on there. And the second thing that I want you to see is the glory of the Lord. Uh, it appears ten times in Ezekiel, three times in these two chapters. That's quite an impressive thing when you think about the glory of the Lord. You remember at the birth of Jesus, the glory of the Lord shone about? Well, Ezekiel's getting a chance to see the glory of the Lord quite a bit, and uh, ten times uh, in this, uh, chap in this uh, book. So we, we see the glory of the Lord, and we are going to see a significance of it uh, as we approach uh, uh, these chapters. But let's first take a look at uh, chapter 10, verse 2, the man in the linen clothes. And he spoke to the man clothed in linen and said, Enter between the whirling wheels under the cherubim and fill your hands with coals of fire from between the cherubim and scatter them over the city. And he entered in my sight. And Jesus is the only one that can purify. And he is the one that is symbolically here in typology uh, being shown as the one that can purify the city, purify the people. Uh, and yet we know that that's not going to yet happen because Jerusalem is going to come under siege and is going to fall. It's going to be punished for its iniquity. We've already seen that prophesied by Ezekiel. Uh, but the glory of the Lord here is very significant in the fact that what we're going to see is a picture of the glory of the Lord leaving the temple and leaving Jerusalem and leaving the people uh, so that... Uh, this siege of the city can take place. It's a terrible thing when the glory of the Lord leaves a church, a nation, a country, uh, the world. Uh, and thankfully, he's not going to do that right now, but, uh, but uh, he certainly can leave a church. And the glory of the Lord is a terrible thing to lose if you're a church. So let's take a look at the glory of the Lord in verse 18. Then the glory of the Lord departed from the threshold of the temple and stood over the cherubim. In the rest of chapter 10, we see a picture of those spinning wheels and we see the picture of the cherubim and we, we would uh, think that we're having a flashback to chapter 1, uh, verses 4 and following. Uh, but uh, obviously Ezekiel is being uh, reminded that he's in the presence of God in all of his power and all of his might and his sovereignty. Uh, but let's take a look at chapter 11, because chapter 11 has a lot to uh, look at. We have a new picture, this time just like a drone again. Ezekiel is taken from the temple to the east gate. And at the east gate, he sees 25 men uh, who are standing by the gate. Uh, these are the leaders uh, in the Judea, Jerusalem area, but only two of them are really identified for us. Is J. As Naya and Pella Taya. These are the sons of Azer and B. Naya. And they have been charged with two things here in the scripture. 
The first is to devise iniquity. They actually are making up iniquity. They're, they're creating iniquity. And the second is they're giving evil advice to the people of Jerusalem. Uh, these people who are caught up in iniquity, they're saying, don't worry about it. You're just going to be like meat in a pot. The fire won't touch you. You're, you're separated from the fire by a great big protective pot. And uh, that was misleading the people, giving them evil advice. Let's take a look uh, and see what God says for Ezekiel to do about this problem of these 25 leaders who are devising iniquity and giving evil advice. Therefore prophesy against them, son of man, prophesy. The Spirit of the Lord fell upon me, and he said to me, Say, Thus says the Lord, So you think the house of Israel? For I know your thoughts. Well, these two leaders are not only giving bad advice, but they're worshiping idols, and they're known in the scriptures uh, during this time. Uh, but uh, they're being prophesied against, and uh, as a matter of fact, to drive the home the point, God allows Pelantiah to die during the very time that uh, he's being prophesied about, uh, which I'm sure made quite an impact on the people. Let's take a look at verses 7 and 8 of chapter 11. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, your slain whom you have laid in the midst of the city are the flesh, and this city is the pot. But I will bring you out of it, and you have feared a sword, so I will bring a sword upon you, and the Lord declares. They got bad advice, but Ezekiel is prophesying that uh, they're going to be taken out of the pot and that they're going to fall by the sword. We know that just in five or six years, that's exactly what would happen if the siege of Jerusalem uh, would take place and that the people would be slaughtered, the city would be burned, the walls would be torn down, and everything that Ezekiel is prophesying would come to pass. Uh, but something interesting happens in chapter 11, verse 13, and that is that Ezekiel shows his heart for the people. Ezekiel takes a look at uh, all of these prophecies that he has to make to the people for the exiles that are in uh, uh, captivity, and he falls on his face before the Lord. He says, oh, Lord, uh, aren't you even going to leave a remnant of people? And God re-encourages uh, Ezekiel, saying, these are always going to be my people. Uh, let's take a look uh, at verses 19 through 21 as we see God's unchanging standard and grace and his kind of will to protect his people. It should be really encouraging to all of us as we look at God's unchanging mercy and grace. And I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them, and I will take the heart of stone out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh, and that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. Then they will be my people, and I will be their God. But as for those whose hearts go after their detestable things and abominations, I will bring their conduct on their heads, declares the Lord God. Yes, we need to be very careful that we present the both attributes of God. He's a just, loving, gracious, kind, forgiving God. But he's also a God of justice. He's a God of righteousness. And here we see that contrast. We see the way that he wants to continue to be our God. And he, we, he wants us to be his people. But he also wants to make sure that we know that if we're going to live in iniquity, and if we're going to live in an unrighteous condition, that he will bring that down upon us. So let's finally take a look and see exactly what Ezekiel did in chapter 11. As God had commanded him to prophesy, he's been taken as a drone to see what was going to happen in Jerusalem. He was taken back, and he saw the glory of the Lord being lifted from the temple and lifted from Judea. And he goes back to those that are in captivity. 
and uh, let's see if he was obedient or not. And the Spirit lifted me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God to the exiles in Chaldea. So the vision that I had seen left me. And then I told the exiles all the things that the Lord had shown me. What does God desire of us? Obedience. And that's exactly what Ezekiel got. He saw the vision. He was taken back from the vision to the exiles. He shared the vision with them. He prophesied against the nation of Judah and against the temple and against the leadership there. He foretold of the destruction of the temple and uh, the city of, Ju of Jerusalem and was obedient to God's command. And that's what God desires. God desires our obedience to his commands. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.